All right, guys. So it looks like uh, it's just turning eight o'clock now. So we'll get started. Um, actually, before we get started, I do want to mention one thing. Um, I had a couple of people ask me about um, the recorded replays and making them available. I should have those up uh, probably on YouTube this week. Um, I have them saved on my hard drive. I just have to kind of edit out because it starts recording as soon as I um, start the session. So there's like, you know, 10, 15 minutes of just blank screen. So I just got to go and kind of crop the video, edit a little bit, and I'll get it up online. And um, I'll send out the, the, the links to that uh, as soon as... Uh, as soon as they're available. I will have that up definitely by, uh, uh, probably by Wednesday or Thursday, I should have those up. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get into uh, the session here. So today we're gonna kind of go over what we um, can expect at the beginning, you know, the first week, the first couple weeks, um, leading up to um, getting our bees and then, you know, what we're looking for when we, um, when we do get them. So getting prepared, the first thing you'll want to do is, is assemble your hive if needed. If you bought it in, um, you know, unassembled, had it shipped, um, um, certainly budget some time, for at least a few hours. Uh, the frames alone take quite a while to, to put together. Um, so, you know, budget yourself some time for, for that. Uh, then you're going to want to prime and paint. Um, I used uh, Kills 2. For the primer and then really any exterior grade paint will work a lot of people will use the um like the the home deeper or, or lowe's uh, oops paint you know because the, the color isn't isn't overly important um so you can get you know a gallon of exterior paint for you know half or a third of the price of a, of a regular gallon so a lot of people go that route i went white because i was putting up against a white fence and i have neighbors and i kind of wanted to minimize the um them sticking out. So the, the first hives I got, I painted white. Uh, when you paint them, you want to paint uh, only the parts of the hive that are exposed to the elements. So all of the outside pieces. You don't want to paint the inside of the boxes. You don't want to paint the frames. You know, the inner cover, you wouldn't paint at all. Um, so only the, the parts of the hive that are exposed to the elements. And then you're going to want to make some uh, sugar syrup. Uh, you'll need to uh, feed the bees at the beginning, especially if you're if you're uh, um, getting a package of bees because they're not going to have any reserves. Um, you'll still want to feed a, a nucleus hive if you if you start with one of those, but they probably won't need as much because they'll probably have at least a frame or so of um, of honey or syrup uh, already um, in the comb of the hive. And you can make either a, a one to one simple syrup or, or a two to one two part sugar uh, to one part water. Um, people go either way in that. I usually do two to one because I figure they need the sugar more than the water. Um, but yeah, uh, either one works. <clears throat> so once you've got everything kind of set up, primed and painted, um, you're going to want to figure out where you're going to put the bees and set up your hive stand. Um, it can be pretty simple. Like I mentioned, uh, I think it was the last session. You want to elevate it off the ground a little bit. Um, so that, you know, any pests or, um, you know, like skunks or, or anything that might come up and bother your bees to, um, it exposes their, their belly, their underside, which doesn't have the thick fur, um, and allows the bees to sting it and, and chase them off. So you want to elevate it a little bit. You want it to be, um, um, pretty level. Um, if, if anything, you want it to be pitched ever so slightly towards the front so that any rain that gets on that front porch doesn't. Um, flow into the into the hive towards the back. Uh, you want anything that that um, any water that gets on the on the landing board to to be pitched away from the hive so it just runs out. Um, so yeah, um, so pretty straightforward. This is the one that I I did my first season, um, and you can see the white fence and why I use the white paint. But the um, you know it can be very basic or you can get kind of fancy with it. I've seen some that you know the um, they have a slot in there where the hives fit perfectly in place and are, and are equally spaced, you know, either three or four hives per, uh, per an eight foot, um, um, stand. Uh, but you know, you can get as fancy or, or as basic as you want. So you have your stand set up, your hives already painted. 
and you get your bees. This is what the standard package looks like. And you can see um, there's a, a metal can inside the hive. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but um, there's a metal can that ha that's the feeder. So during shipment that ha has sugar water in it and there's a couple little holes poked in the bottom. And that's where the bees, <clears throat> excuse me, that's where the bees can, um, can get some food and kind of keeps them alive during, during their, their, uh, their trip. And then if you look at the top, there's a little piece of Luan covering the, the hole where the feeder is. And then there's a little strap coming off to the left side. That strap is, is connected to a queen cage. So the queen is in there as well. She's in her own protective cage. So when you are getting ready to install your package, the first thing you want to do is spray them down with some sugar syrup. And what that does is it kind of gets them more focused on cleaning each other off because because honeybees are generally pretty hygienic. They like to have a clean house, and so if they if they have sugar on them, then you know they'll start cleaning each other and grooming each other, and won't be as um, interested in what you're about to do. So you'll you'll spray them down. Um, sometimes you can use a regular spray bottle. If, it, if you're using the two to one, it might be a little thick for that. I've used um, um, like just a, a water bottle, like a like a Poland Springs disposable bottle, and uh, just poke some pinholes in the cap and use that. Just squeeze the bottle and, and spray them down that way. So it's a, a simple way to do that. So after you spray them down with the with the sugar syrup, then you're gonna pry off that piece of Luan, take out the that can feeder, and uh, remove the queen as well. And you'll you'll set both of those aside and um, put the piece of Luan back over the hole just so that the bees aren't flying out all over the place. Then what you'll do is you'll, at your hive, you're gonna to want to uh, take out three or four frames out of the middle. So you're gonna have the bottom uh, deep box set up uh, or medium if you're using uh, um, a medium versus deep setup. Um, so you take some frames out of the middle, set them off to the side, and then you're gonna shake the bees out of the box into the bottom of the hive. And they'll um, immediately start crawling around on the, um, on the wax foundations, kind of getting a feel for the place. Um, and if you notice in the picture, not a lot flying. There, there'll be a few flying around, um, but not an excessive amount because of the, uh, the sugar syrup. And then after you do that, you'll slowly put um, the frames back into the box. There'll be, you know, probably an inch or two of bees on the bottom of the, the bottom box. So you don't want to be jamming the, the frames in there. You'll squish them bees. Um, but if you kind of nestle it in and let it slowly go down, they'll, they'll, they'll slowly move out of the way and the frame will settle into place. So put them all back in, except one. Um, so in a 10 frame box, you'll have nine frames in there and a little space uh, towards the middle. <clears throat> okay, and so this is what the queen cage looks like. So the queen is in, in her own separate cage. She might even have a few attendants um, in there with her uh, to feed her during the journey. The attendants will uh, be from her original hive. Um, but because um, the way packages are made, they take they shake bees off of you know several different frames off of several different hives. Um, so if a queen was in there, they um, may or may not accept her right away. Most likely they would say, this isn't my queen, and they would just immediately um, kill her. So she's uh, in a separate protected cage. The cage has um, holes on each end of it, um, with little, and they'll come with cork plugs um, in the ends. Um, one end has a, a candy plug as well. That's what, if you look at one end, it looks like it has like a um, like a sugar substance. That's basically a, a hard candy that they have blocking one of the holes. Um, so th that's keeping her in. So there'll be the candy side with a cork and then the other side will just uh, be only a cork. So when you get the, the queen cage out of the, out of the package, first thing you wanna do is make sure she's in there and is alive. Um, if she's marked, you know, you make sure that, you know, you can see it and it's, it's a good marking. Um, then you're going to remove the cork from the end with the sugar plug only. Um, basically what that is, is a slow release for the queen. So the bees will have to eat through that sugar plug uh, in order to get to her, to release her from that cage. And that'll take three or four days um, for them to, to work their way through that. 
And the idea is um, by the time that happens, all the bees that are in that uh, hive are familiar with her pheromones and realize there's no other queen that, you know, without her, they would be queenless. And so they are more likely to accept her. So after you pull out the cork from the, um, the sugar plug side, um, you can wedge the queen cage between um, frames towards the middle, but offset um, a little bit um, with the candy side facing up. And the reason you'll do that is if there are some attendants in there, if they do happen to die, they're not gonna be blocking the hole for her exit. Um, so that you want the candy side facing up and you wanna make sure the, the screen uh, is exposed in the hive so that the pheromones that she's giving off are uh, are making their way through the hive. You know, if you have the screen part flat up against uh, a frame, that you're not gonna let, get a lot of the pheromone um, released. And also workers aren't gonna be able to come over and feed her um, while they're working their way out. <clears throat> and then you're gonna wanna just confirm the queen was released from the cage three to five days after you install that. So, you know, after you put the queen in there, close it up, um, you're just gonna wanna leave it alone for you know, three or four days at least, um, and let the bees do their work, let them get um, accustomed to their, to their new home. And, um, you know, if you get in there and poke around or try to peek too much, they might say, you know, this, this might not be the location we want to be in it. And they, they could just leave the hive entirely. So you want to make sure you give them time, uh, time alone to get used to it. If you're installing a nucleus hive versus a package, so if you buy, buy a nuke, um, it's, uh, uh, it's an easier process. So the, the, the nucleus hive is basically uh, a hive. It already has a queen and it's a, it's a miniature hive. So there's only five frames in it. Um, and, um, the queen is in there, she's laying, there's, they're going to have some frames of, of pollen frame of, um, honey and, you know, two or three frames of, of, uh, eggs and larvae and brood. Um, from that queen. So what you all you'll have to do is take five of the empty frames out of the, the hive that you purchase, put the five frame from the nuke box into the middle of the um, of the hive in the place of the five frames you took out, and then just shake the remaining bees out um, that were that are walking around the box in the bottom of the box. You just shake those out, and uh, it's important to put the frames in into your hive in the same order they are in the nucleus. Uh, colony because the the way the bees generally work is they'll put their honey stores towards the outside so frames one and frame five might be honey and then frames two three and four where the brood and pollen are and um, kind of where the, the where the bee bees are going to be more clustered when they're you know keeping the uh, keeping the the larva and the cap brood uh, uh, warm so you don't want to just stick a frame of honey right in the middle of their um, of where they're where they're raising their bees, so keep everything in the same order. <clears throat> All right, so this is a, a picture of after the installation. So I had the bottom box. I put the the queen in there. I, next thing you want to do is add a pollen patty to the box, which is that um, brown rectangle towards the back. Um, the pollen is a very like gummy gooey substance so and it's in between two pieces of wax paper um, you leave the wax paper on the bees will will chew through it to get to the pollen and and, and it'll be fine um, but what the pollen does it'll get the queen laying so she's thinking all right you know there's there's pollen coming to the hive you know the bees use the pollen to help raise the brood um, so that kind of triggers her to start laying so so the hive has a chance to really ramp up early in the season so after you put the uh, the pollen patty on, then you're going to put your inner cover on top of that, uh, which is the uh, the board right below the the hive there, uh, with the it has a hole in the middle, and then you're going to add a um, a sugar water feeder on top of the inner cover, and the bees will come up through the hole in the middle of the inner cover, get the sugar water, and bring it back down. <clears throat> And so this is what the um, um, one of the setups look like. So, like I mentioned last week, there's a there's several different kinds of feeders you can use. This is one of the uh, the one gallon pail feeders. Um, it has a little section um, 
probably an inch or two wide that has a screen over it and you fill it with the sugar water, put the cap on and um, the surface tension is enough to hold the moisture or, or hold the syrup in. So you just kind of, you turn it over, let some of it seep out until it creates that, that vacuum and holds it in. And then you put it over um, on top of the inner cover. Now I put it right over the middle hole um, I would recommend offsetting it a little bit. That way, if it does start to drip, it's not dripping all over the the queen cage or the you know the bees or the brood. So, uh, a good idea to just offset it just a little bit. It's also why you wouldn't put your uh, your queen cage directly in the center of the hive. You want that offset. Um, uh, oh, and another thing, if you look at the picture on the left, um, I have the um, the open package leaned up against the front of the hive. Um, and so any, you know, you're never going to shake all the bees out of the package. So what happens is, um, if you lean it up against the entrance, the bees that are in there, um, will, will start to, to fan and, um, and, and that's a, a signal to them that, Hey, this is, this is where we are. This is the home now. And they'll walk out of the, uh, the package box and just walk right in the front door. <clears throat> So, because if you recall, the um, the younger bees don't really fly. Their job is taking care of the brood and are taking care of the queen. They don't really fly much until they become uh, foragers or guard bees. So there may be some bees in the package um, that are young and haven't have never really flown. So they'll just walk their way right into the hive. And then it's done. So now we wait. So this is what it looks like um, after you first set it up. So the um, the the frames and brood are uh, the frames and the bees and the queen cage uh, is in this bottom box. Mm -hmm. Then there's an inner cover, which is the unpainted piece. And then on top of that is the feeder. And just to protect the feeder and protect the hive from robbers, um, you, you can put your second box on top of uh, that to um, create a, um, a barrier and then you put your outer cover on top of that and you'll leave it like that like I say at least three to five days um, when the queen's released then you'll be able to um, go in check your sugar uh, water see if you need to, to top that off um, once there's a lot of bees now you'll be surprised how quickly they can take down the sugar syrup um, you could easily go through a, a gallon in three or four days uh, um, without even, you know, without too much, uh, um, too much trouble. Um, at the beginning with the three pound package, your, your gallon will, will likely last you around a week, um, I would estimate, but it takes a lot of energy for them to create the wax and they need that sugar to, to help them create the wax. So the first year you're going to uh, be doing a lot of feeding because they have a lot of wax they need to draw out, basically 20 frames of, of brood frames. And then you know, maybe another 10, maybe more uh, for, for the honey super. So um, first year, lots of feeding and the, the bees are going to be very busy uh, building out comb. <clears throat> All right, so here's a picture. Uh, this was going in after, uh, after a few days, confirming the queen was released. And if you remember uh, last week, we talked about the bee space. If there's more than that three eighths of an inch, the bees will either, um, if it's more, they'll fill it with comb. If it's less, they'll, they'll um, use propolis and, and seal it off. So when we have the queen cage in there, and if you recall, there was only nine frames. Um, this was after just three or four days, they already started building comb in the gap um, where the queen cage was. Um, so, you know, the importance of having all of your frames in there and tight together are, uh, um, uh, are, are quite important. Um, this piece of comb, you just, you'll just take off, set aside, you know, when you melt down um, wax later on, you can um, just add it to the bunch. So um, that's generally what I'll do is, you know, any random comb, any burr comb, I'll just um, scrape off, set aside, and, and then, you know, at the end of the season, I'll just melt it all down. So what to expect? So um, a week after you install the bees, um, there should be around two or three frames being worked on, comb being drawn. 
Um, and you should, um, um, after a week, you should see some eggs in the middle um, um, of where the uh, of where they've been drawing out. So the the earlier comb that's drawn out should have some eggs uh, uh, and or larva. Um, so in this frame, you can see, um, you know, if you look towards the left, there's it's still just the foundation. You can see the wires, and then as you move towards the right, you can see more and more of that is be, is being drawn out. Um, along the top, this, the white section is actually um, the sugar water that um, they've stored for later. So there's wax cappings on top of it, which is what they'll do with, with honey as well. And that's how you know it's at the right uh, moisture level. They'll seal it off and save it for later. So, they're, so in this picture, they're, they're drawing it out. They're even saving some of it. Um, and then there's a little ring of pollen. Um, I don't know if you can really see it. Um, but the pollen is right around where the, the eggs were laid. So they have the, the pollen, which they use to feed, um, very close to where the eggs are laid. So you're, you should have a frame or two that looks like this um, after your first week. And then weeks two to three, the bees will be hard at work drying their comb, storing their pollen in the sugar water. Um, you should have uh, closer to seven frames um, drawn out. The, the ones on the ends are always going to be the last, so they'll start from the center and work their way out, and they'll draw frames out um, as needed. So if there's not, um, as long as the queen has room to lay, they're less um, inclined to draw out comb. Um, so what you can do, so I, I said when you installed the, the nucleus hive, keep all the frames in order. Um, one exception to that is um, once most of the frames are drawn out and say frames one and frames 10, they haven't really touched, but frames two and nine, um, they've started working on and maybe you're storing a little bit of the sugar water and you can flip, um, put the outer ones in one and they'll start um, drying that out. So a little trick you can do uh, to try to get them to draw out those frames. And then the, the frame should have a crown of cap sugar syrup uh, around the top, um, which I, I showed in the, in the previous pick. Then in weeks four to six, um, the first batch of bees should, should be hatching. And um, if you recall, you know, the queen lays close to a thousand eggs a day, um, maybe more. So if you have about a thousand eggs hatching every day, um, you're gonna see your, your population in the hive really start to explode. So, and if you recall, worker bees have a, um, from the time the egg is laid until they hatch, um, it's 21 days. So, so three weeks, um, um, three weeks, the first ones will be coming out and, and you should really start seeing the, uh, the growth. Um, that's around the time you're gonna wanna add your second brood box. Um, so the second um, box with the 10 frames and um, and let them go up and start drawing out that because the in all likelihood the middle of the the box is going to be pretty packed with with frames of brood so instead of just that small circle of brood um, you might have a frame that looks a little bit like this where you know side to side top and bottom is all uh, calved brood and so that the need place to expand um, this particular one they don't have the the sugar over here. Um, this was a summer picture, so you know there was no. Uh, it was a time when I I realized I needed to start feeding the bees because they um, it could have been during a, a summer dearth. But um, so you, your middle frames will start looking like this, and that's when you'll know you need to um, add on your second box. And then after that, um, if you when you add your honey super, so, so the bottom two boxes are the, what we call the brood chamber. That's where the queen is gonna be. Um, that's where she's gonna be laying all her eggs. Anything above those two boxes, um, you can use to collect honey. So once the bottom two boxes are drawn out, um, you can add the medium box or shallow box if you, if you want the lighter, um, uh, the lighter box. Um, the difference is, uh, is two inches. The medium's around six and a quarter. The, uh, the shallows are, are like four and a half, something like that. Um, but you, you'll want to add that on top of the second box and let the bees draw that out. 
Now, if you have your honey super on and if you're going to try to harvest honey, which the first year you might get a little bit, you're not going to get a lot because most of the time and energy is going into drawing out the, the comb on, the, on all those frames. Um, but you, you could get some. My first year I got maybe, um, I want to say maybe like 15 pounds uh, of honey off of the hive. Um, which now, you know, it's, it's not worth the cleanup effort for 15 pounds, but you know, the first year and it's exciting, um, you know, it, it's really cool. Um, but if you have your honey super on and you're going to harvest it, um, you don't want to feed the sugar water, um, to the bees because they'll store that in the, in the super and you'll just, um, you'll only have, um, you know, sugar water instead of, instead of honey. It'll be the same, um, thickness. You know, it'll it'll look like honey, and it might even have a little bit of a taste of honey, but it's not uh, going to be the same as as honey. So, um, you know, you can either um, stop feeding when you put that honey super on and let them draw it out as needed, um, or you can have the sugar water on so that they'll draw it out a little bit faster, but um, but just plan on you know not harvesting honey from from the hive that year. Um, or you can do a combination. You could always, um, if you end up buying a honey extractor, um, you can um, you can spin out the um, the sugar once they draw out the frames, um, and either feed it back to them during a time where they where they need it, um, or just save it for you know the the following spring, um, and then just put the empty ones that are already drawn out back on top, and then let them fill that with with actual honey, and then you're good to go. Let me know if you have any questions on that. That came out a little, like it sounded a little confusing. And a bonus tip. <laughs> so I had this happen. Um, I was one of my, uh, my second yard. Um, I was installing some packages and um, some of the sugar water spilled. And I got back home after the bag. Not, I didn't think anything of it, but the bees uh, at my house, got caught wind of the sugar and I had a couple thousand bees um, flying around the bed of my truck for, for a couple hours until they cleaned it up. So um, yeah, <laughs> there's your pro tip. <laughs> Don't spill your sugar water on your truck. <clears throat> okay. And so it's the, it's that time of year. So, you know, this is when everything is really ramping up. The, the bee packages are going to be coming in in a couple of weeks. Um, hive, you know, I know um, a, a friend of mine who we split our, um, our orders from um, are, are really ramped up this time of year. So if you're interested in purchasing bees or a hive, uh, shoot me an email. If you are still not sure, hesitant, need to do more research. I know I did my research for a, a couple of years. Uh, before I finally pulled the trigger. Um, but if, um, if you want to join me on hive inspections or installations, I have um, five packages coming in uh, April 3rd. So, I, so I'm going to be installing packages, um, probably two or three in, in, in Charlton, uh, and then two of them I'm going out to Belchertown. My, uh, uh, I have somebody out that way who... Um, who wanted to have a couple hives and wanted me to help install. So, um, you know, if you guys are, are curious, want to learn more about it, you know, actually get some bees and not just pictures or YouTube videos. Um, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to have, have people come out and, and observe and, um, you know, participate, pull frames, you know, see if you can find the queen, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I threw this picture in here because this was last week. I uh, picked up frames. A friend of mine ordered ordered by the the pallet and you know split the the freight. So this is what uh, 800 unassembled frames uh, look like, um, and I have about 730 more to put together. So this is the uh, my email address, Scott at theherberthomestead.com, or I have an online store, um, but it, it's easier just to email me. Um, um, I have I have probably two or three hives that are. Um, just about ready. I have to put the wax foundations in, but that's about it. Um, so certainly if you're interested, um, shoot me a message, let me know. Either on purchasing a hive and bees or um, just coming out and doing a, a hands-on inspection. I'm, I'm more than happy to help. Um, I actually had the 
Clark University beekeepers come and uh, get some hands-on experience. So it, it's really nice. It's, it's cool to be able to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, no class next week. I'm going to be out of town for a uh, uh, for a wedding and won't be back in time. Or and if I am, I probably won't be uh, um, prepared to to teach a class. Um, so next week, um, after this class is over, I'm going to go and, and update the, the schedule to reflect it. So uh, the March 17th class will just be bumped back a week. Um, and that's going to be the um, management of the hives throughout the year. So what to look for in the spring, what to look for in the summer, the fall, and, and winter. We'll go through all the seasons. Um, uh, and, and we'll also look at... Um, um, abnormalities in the hive. So when you're looking at frames, what's not, uh, what's not correct, what's not where it should be and solutions to, to remedy it. And that's, that's all I have for today. So if there's any questions, certainly let me know. Um, just type them in the, in the group chat thing there and, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. And it, Classes tend to be going about a half hour. I never really know when I put the PowerPoints together if I'm going to go off on any tangents or um, spend a lot of time on a slide or just fly through them. But uh, yeah, this is the first uh, first time I'm doing this class, so working out the kinks. So I'll just wait another minute or so, see if anybody has questions. Okay, so we have a question about uh, drone frames and how to use them. Um, so um, we'll go over that in more detail next week when we talk about um, um, the abnormalities in a hive and, and, um, and difficulties that the hive will have. And one of them is, is going to be varroa mites. And the drone frames are an excellent way to um, kind of get, get to reduce your mite population. Um, in a nutshell, basically what it is, is, is a, it's a frame that has um, imprinted uh, hexagons, kind of like the, the wax foundation or the plastic foundation does, but it's larger. Um, and the queen will only lay uh, drones in these larger cells because the, the drones are, are bigger bees. Um, and because they take longer, they take 24 days um, from egg to, to um, emergence. Um, the mites tend to gravitate towards them because it gives them a, lo a longer time to... Um, to eat off of the uh, off of the uh, the larva. Um, so what you do is basically you have a frame in there. After the frames are capped, you take it out, put it in the freezer. It kills the mites. It kills the drones too. But um, as we discussed, the the only purpose of the drones is for mating. Otherwise, they just leach off of the resources of the hive. So not a big deal there. Um, and then after after being in the freezer for you know forty eight hours or so, you can put it back into the hive and the bees will, will clean out all the dead larvae and the dead mites and it just helps reduce the, the population. Um, that did actually just remind me, I'm not sure why, but um, I do have a quick video that I had made um, when I installed the package. And if I can figure this out, I can kind of play it for you. Okay, so you should be able to hopefully see my screen now. So this was installing a package um, very early on. I want to say maybe 2013-ish. Um, I'll skip around a little bit. I, I didn't have a helper um, with the recording. So uh, I just had to use a little tripod. Oops. So this is prying off of that, that piece of Luan. And sometimes those um, the the feed cans are really jammed in there pretty good. This one wasn't too bad, but uh, it took me a minute or two to get it out. So skip to that part. When you're working with bees, especially with no um, no um, no veil or gloves, you really just want to move slow and methodically. Um, no sudden movements, nothing to to scare them. This was a 
a somewhat cold overcast day. So the bees really didn't like to be out anyway. Um, and you can also see in the, um, on the side of the package, the sugar drips cause I, I sprayed them down. I'm just getting suited up here. And then I'm removing the, the queen cage here. Also took a little bit of work here. I'm just in there looking, making sure that looks like she's moving. Let's skip ahead and have a little bit. It's like a 20 minute video, but there's only a couple good minutes. Little more sugar for good measure. You can see the spray bottle was not a, a big fan of the, the two to one syrup, but it works. And then they basically just pour right out of the box. The sugar also helps them, they, they kind of clump together a little bit more. And that's where the, I lost my camera. <laughs> so, okay, so then I picked it up. So you can see, you know, a couple inches of bees on the bottom that they start crawling up the sides of the foundation. And then I put it down again. Sorry, it's a terrible video, but. I just realized I had it. So you can see there's the queen. Let me kind of pause that for a second. Can I pause it? No. All right, yeah, so the, the queen's in there. She has some attendants in there. She's alive and well. You can see the candy plug. This was a yellow queen, which is probably the the worst color you could have because a lot of the pollen that comes into the hive is yellow. So it didn't actually help you uh, find her all that easy. Let's see if I did anything else here. So this is where I would have been putting the pollen patty on, putting everything back together. Let's see if. You can see the queen cage, the plug side is up. I could have um, put it, um, had the frame, I uh, have the screen sideways. So have it be the um, longer on the width instead of the length. Um, but there was a, a, a good amount of, of screen, space, screen space still below because I had it um, up a little bit. Um, but yeah, the ones I do now, um, I have the screen, um, on the long side that has a little bit more exposure. And then the package is by the entrance. And I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, that was it. Right, hopefully you guys can see that and I wasn't just talking while you were staring at a blank screen. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, so, so that's it for, for this week. And like I say, we'll pick back up on the 24th, um, about what to look for in the hives and also, um, you know, what issues you might have. 
All right. Thanks a lot. And we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. All right, bye guys.